Hey everybody, today's video is about this painting back here. Whoop, that one there. And it's actually about the clouds and the rescuing. Oh wow, I'm just pointing all wrong. There we go. It's about the rescuing of this paper. So I had started the sky. Oh, I'm Marion Stroh, the inappropriate artist. And I am, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And if you'd like to check out my Patreon after you watch this video, you can check out the links below. Uh, it's right at the top. I also have a place to buy prints. And if you want to contribute to my artistic endeavors, uh, the links are below for that as well. So now, on to the video. This paper is expensive. It's a 300-pound Arches watercolor paper, hot, uh, excuse me, cold press. So it's not inexpensive, and I had started the sky back in Mississippi, and I kind of lost the Mississippi vibe when I left. So when I got here, and I was looking at this pad, and I was like, "Ugh, I gotta do something with this guy." I decided one day to just kind of start playing with it to see what would happen, and this is the video that came of that, and then my problem solving for the foreground and how I ended up with this. So without further ado, I bring you some poofy clouds. Okay, voice over me here. And as you can see, I am working with the whites in the clouds, layering them in and having to deal with the dry shift that happens with gouache. When you lay the white down, uh, it I'm doing it slowly because I'm trying to create the impression of the layers as if the cloud is building naturally. So I was sort of in a daydream this day. This paper is expensive paper and I truly didn't want it to go to waste and I thought, well, maybe I can just make a gorgeous cloud and it'll inspire me to paint a different foreground or even to keep the same foreground that I had, which originally was Mississippi Cypress. In the end, I decided not to, and you'll see that soon. Here you see I'm putting in the shadows, just very gently. And when you work with gouache, the darks dry lighter. So this shows you how, you know, the drying shift changes things and those purples go in quite dark. They end up fading quite a bit. And I started adding in more white and then started wondering if I was going too far. And then thought, well, you know what? Let me leave these guys alone and I'm gonna head, you know, into these little tops and just reinforce my highlights. And enjoyed that process. As you can see through this whole thing, I'm just making simple marks. Now, if you also notice, my brush is almost always pointed in that direction you see there, right? And the reason for that is I think in terms of movement, how is the wind blowing and where is it coming from? And that's what gives me direction when I put my brush down. Here you see me building the subtlety of the distant clouds as they fade. And one of the things that really drew me to wanting to find a more substantial foreground to this painting was the fact that these clouds had become such subjects, as you can see, but I still felt something was missing. So I thought, well, let me go and check out some clouds in nature. I'm going to go pick up a friend and go for a ride. We ended up on the back side of Elephant Butte Lake with this absolutely stunning view of Kettle Top and the Fra Cristobal Mountains. As many of you know, they are my obsession. And I really took time to study these clouds, brought the image back, manipulated it a little bit, and then began to slowly build my foreground. I also did a little extra work in the clouds, right? Going and checking that out gave me an opportunity to fluff them out a little bit more. And I love the building of this distance. I'm so proud of how this painting really turned out. And it may be 
may be the most distance I've been able to accomplish in a painting yet. And I threw in here at the end this beautiful creosote in the foreground to really draw your eye in, along with some pebbles and grass and shadows. It really worked out well and it sold immediately, which is the way I like it to work. This painting was nine by 12 inches and we'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.